In the first month of 190 AD, Chiao Mao, the governor of Dong Jun Commandery, forged the documents of the three counselors and called on the governors of various commanderies to rise up against Dong Zhuo. At that time, leaden warlords responded, Chiao Mao, the governor of Dong Jun, Yuan Shao, the governor of Bo Hai Commandery, Yuan Shu, the general of Rear, Han Fu, the governor of Jizhou Province, Kong Zhou, the governor of Yuzhou Province, Liu Dai, the governor of Yanzhou Province, Wang Kuang, the governor of Hernei Commandery, Zhang Niao, the governor of Chen Liu Commandery, Zhang Chao, the governor of Guang Ling Commandery, Yuan Yi, the governor of Shanyang Commandery, and Bao Xin, the governor of Jibei Commandery. We find that unlike the 18 warlords in the novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Cao Cao, Sun Jian, and Liu Bei are not among them, because Cao Cao belonged to Zhang Mayo's army at this time, while Sun Jian was under Yuan Shi's command, and the two of them had not yet formed an independent and strong enough armed force. Liu Bei is still under Gong Sun Zan's command, making preparations for his rise to power, while Gong Sun Zan is not involved at all. At that time, Yuan Shao and Wang Kuang were stationed in Hernei, while Zhang Niao, Liu Dai, Chiao Mao, Yuan Yi, and Bao Xin were stationed in Suan Zhao, Yuan Shu was stationed in Luyang, Kong Zhou was in Ying Chuan, and Han Fu stayed in Ye Qing, responsible for providing the allied army with munity, NS and provisions. They elected Yuan Shao to be the alliance leader, because at that time people used to take Han Gu Pass as the boundary. West of Han Gu Pass is called Guan Xi, east of Han Gu Pass is called Guan Dong, because the territories of the heroes are in the east of the Han Gu Pass. So the alliance to fight against the Dong Zhuo is also known as the Guangdong Army. The warlords of the Guangdong region, though each with their own agenda, had hundreds of thousands of troops, which was a great deal of prestige. Upon learning the news, Dong Zhuo was more disappointed than intimidated, because the vast majority of these people were appointed by him. It was at this point that the devastated Dong Zhuo finally recognized the situation, gave up his unrealistic ideals of governance and began to embark on a path, f no return. Driven by this state of mind, Dong Zhuo decided to avoid the front line for the time being, and continued to stay in the city of Luoyang himself, while relocating Emperor Shanapan and his ministers to Chang'an, which was closer to his own base. This forcible relocation of the capital brought about deep suffering to the people of the city of Luoyang, and innumerable innocent deaths were recorded. Yuan Shao's uncles, Yuan Wei and Yuan Ji, had dozens of their entire families killed, while Lu Bu and others even took the opportunity to raid the tombs of the Eastern Han emperors. Though Dong Zhuo was scared, the Guangdong coalition army instead made no moves as everyone wanted to save their strength and continue to support their own troops and no one refused to be the first to engage Dong Zhuo in battle. At this point, Cao Cao, who was still under Zhang Niao's command, was very upset, and he impassionately rebuked Dong Zhuo, and urged the allied forces to hurry up, but no one except Bao Xin paid him any attention at all, and seeing this, Cao Cao had to act alone with Bao Xin, they each lead their own troops, and prepared to enter the Hulao Pass. Seeing Cao Cao's determination, Zhang Nia also dispatched Wei Zi to follow Cao Cao into battle. When they reached the Bian Shui River in Xinyang, they met Xu Rong, a general sent by Dong Zhuo. And Cao Cao was defeated, with half of his soldiers killed or wounded, Bao Xi wounded, Wei Zi killed, and Cao Cao himself wounded by a bow and arrow. The situation was very urgent. When Cao Cao's life was in danger, Cao Hong gave his horse to Cao Cao, and ran after him, and when he arrived at the bank of the Bian, Shui River, he saw that the current was so strong that he couldn't cross the river, and Xu Rong's pursuers were approaching in a flash. Cao Hong then ran wildly all the way along the river, and finally found a small boat, 
south-south and crossed the Bian Shui R, Burren escaped in a terrible mess. After returning to Xuanzao, South Cao proposed that Yuan Shao lead his troops to Mengjin, while the generals in Swans thus stationed themselves at Hula Pass to control the dangerous terrain, and Yuan Shu could lead his troops into Wuquan Pass to sneak inside, where Dong Zha's belly was vulnerable to the enemy, and the country could be settled in an instant, but the warlords were still busy with banquets and parties, and no one wanted to pay any attention to Cao Cao. So Cao Cao went to her nay to join Yuan Shao. At this point in time, the most aggressive person in the entire Guangdong army, besides Cao Cao, was only Sun Jian, and Sun Jian's experience of being defeated was very similar to Cao Cao. Right after Cao Cao's defeat, Shi Rong also had an encounter with Sun Jian in Liangshan County. When Sun Jian was defeated, he killed his way out with only a few dozen men. Because Sun Jian often wore a red turban, he was afraid of being targeted by Shi Rong, so he took it off and put it on the head of Du Mao, who distracted Shi Rong's cavalry while Sun Jian escaped by a small road. Seeing that the Guangdong army was not united, Dong Zhuo launched a proactive attack, targeting Wang Huang, who was stationed in her nay. Dong Zhuo first bluffed Wang Huang into believing that he was going to cross the river from Pinyin, and then used his elite troops to cross the river via Xiao Qi Jin, and circled around and attacked Wang Kuang's rear, which resulted in Dong Zhu's great victory, and Wang Kuang's almost total annihilation. Although the war is unfavorable, the internal struggle between the warlords of Guangdong is getting more and more intense. First, Han Fu, who is already exhausted, is unwilling to provide provisions for the allied army. Then Xiao Mao is killed by Liu Dai because of his personal grudges, and at this time, Yuan Xiao and Han Fu are thinking of setting up a new way and appoint Liu Yu, the Grand Chancellor of Wars, as the Morin instead. Inside the apparently powerful Guangdong army, there is really a lot of secret fighting and each of them is harboring their own evil intentions, which is irredeemable. Sun Jian, who was previously unknown, exploded his energy in an inconspicuous corner, and threw a warm light into the world at the end of the Han Dynasty from the obscure cracks.